Okay, let's go ahead and jump into this thing uh, of the respective time for everybody. Uh, first and foremost, would absolutely uh, like to thank each of you for jumping on, not only Charge Up, but my fellow panelists. I'd like to thank you for taking time out of your quarantined schedule. Uh, but I am confident that you will find value in what we're going to talk about uh, as we all navigate these uncharted waters uh, of adversity. But we're going to turn that into opportunity because it's critical, I think, that everybody understands that every one of us, whether you're young, whether you're old, we're all experiencing a, a new normal. And it's a challenge for everybody. It's not unique to uh, any individual or any age group. Uh, so please don't feel alone and feeling stress or anxiety, fear, depression during this phase. What's the most important thing right now is just communication. I think it's vital that we communicate with our families, with our friends, with our coaches, any way we still can. Uh, that way we are able to uh, be, uh, you know, honest in our feelings, be vulnerable, have the humility to say exactly what we're feeling because you can't pour from an empty cup. And if we're asking everybody to take a positive attitude and to approach this situation with uh, an attitude of gratitude and uh, to find the good in it, it's going to take people who are strong and positive and, and ready to go. One of the things I'm really evaluating is I see this as an amazing opportunity for everybody. And I did say amazing opportunity and probably doesn't go well with what we're experiencing, but the majority of us have actually been given the opportunity to push the pause button in our life. Um, you know, just a month ago, think about the busyness that each of us were experiencing, the stress that each of us were experiencing. We went through a period of our time where we weren't even able to catch up on things that were going on. We were probably all struggling with the stress of life and balance. And it was just part of the routine. For the first time in my life, um, I really do feel like life is on pause for a second. And what I've decided is with this new normal, uh, I want to evaluate where I am, my growth, uh, my goals, my, my relationships, my priorities, and even go back and look at the balance of my life. What was I putting as priorities? What were my non-negotiables in life? What were my core values? And I use the word were because doing that self-evaluation, doing a little bit of self-awareness, it's extremely healthy. And when you have the opportunity to just stop for a second, be alone and do that, you're creating a stronger you, a more confident you. And this is such a great opportunity to do that. Uh, yesterday, I had shared a quote with a group from uh, the head coach of the University of Virginia basketball and I think you can gain some perspective from this, but he said, if you learn to use adversity right, it'll buy you a ticket to a place you couldn't have gone to any other way. I look at this situation as unplanned, unchartered, really couldn't prepare. Well, we're in it. So we've got a choice. Uh, we can let the situation control us or we can take back the control and we can follow it. And we can learn from it, we can grow from it, and we can find something uh, positive where we can help others, and more importantly, help ourselves. And that's the whole thing today, is how can we take obstacles and turn those into opportunity? And I think the experience and the wisdom uh, and the people who are a part of this panel can provide such a, a wide and diverse opinion. So with that, I'm extremely grateful to the four people who are here with us today to give their time. And like I talked about, the uniqueness of each person gives you amazing perspective, amazing perspective. We've got education, teaching, coaching, uh, those who have played collegiate sports. We even have a future Olympian with us. We have uh, so many aspects covered that I really don't think there isn't a question that we can't get to or at least address uh, in a way that at least through all of us, we can give you a little bit of comfort and or advice. So what the agenda is going to look like is probably the, thir the first 30 minutes, we'll focus on uh, a few questions that the group put together that uh, hopefully can be broad enough to address certain situations for student athletes. 
from there, we're going to open it up for about 30 or 45 minutes with questions from you. And that's where that chat bar is going to become critical because we'll look at that. And if there are, uh, you know, redundancy within those questions, we'll simplify it that way. We can get it knocked out, but we'll make sure to uh, go through and get those questions and we'll throw them out to the group and let them kind of take it and piggyback from there. So let me introduce the panel. Uh, first off, we've got uh, Chip Baker, uh, 20 years uh, teaching and coaching in the Houston area. He received his undergrad from West Texas A&M, where he also played football. He then earned his master's at Sam Houston State University. He is the creator of the Success Chronicles, uh, the three-time best-selling author. Uh, he also has the Chip Baker Character Development Program. Now, Chip, uh, Dr. Mike and myself, we all got to know each other uh, last October by participating in the John Gordon training class for Power of Positive Leaders. And uh, we always talk about that inner circle, hang around people who can teach you, uh, hang around people who can elevate you, raise your bar. And I've been blessed uh, to have both Chip and Mike Goddard be uh, some of those new people in my inner circle to make me stronger. So I, I want to thank Chip because uh, he is absolutely a mentor and one of the, the most positive people I've ever met. Uh, so talking about Dr. Mike Goddard, uh, graduate of Stephen F. Austin State, also a master's from North Texas State. And of course, he had the one-up chip. So he went and got his doctoral degree of education from North Texas State. Uh, he was the FCA president, team captain, and four-year starter at Stephen F. Austin. He's invested over 30 years working with youth uh, and through the school system. And he is now the superintendent of schools uh, at the Lovejoy Independent School District in Dallas. If you just follow this guy on social media, you will see he is one of the most involved, committed, and interactive superintendents that I've ever met. And to be honest with you, it absolutely inspires me because I'm still convinced that there are three Dr. Mike Goddards that did, they just take shifts and do things. I don't know where that guy's off button is, but it's absolutely amazing. Uh, then we're going to go to somebody who uh, I uh, had admired for years and had the opportunity to become friends with, and that's Haley McClenney, uh, 2016 summa cum laude from the University of Alabama, uh, master's degree from Florida Atlantic University, three-time All-American academic. Now, student athletes on the phone, you notice I haven't said anything yet about the athlete part because I want you to remember what a student athlete is because I think it's evident that Haley took that part very serious. When she went to the University of Alabama, she knew she was going to get a degree. She knew she was going to accomplish her goals and that softball was going to just be this gift that she had. And she continues to pursue that education. I think she's always going to school. She's never stopped. But it's amazing when you can read those things off about an athlete. Now I'll get to the fun part. We have a four-time NFCA All-American, three-time Women College World Series participant, seven-time member of Team USA. She was the Lowe's Senior Class Award winner in 2016, the NCAA Today's Top 10 Award winner in 2016, and she was named to the Tokyo 2020 Team USA Softball Olympics, which will now be Team 2021. So we're going to root even more. We're going to get even more people behind you, Haley. We're going to blow this thing up. But, you know, I mentioned Haley had been a player that I had admired uh, since her early days uh, in the Crimson and the White. Uh, she is no doubt the epitome of grit, her enthusiasm, her love for the game, the way she uh, works with teammates. Uh, everybody loves Halo. And when I started working in the National Professional Fast Pitch League, I uh, had the opportunity to draft Haley and get to meet her. And like, I, I was just amazed. Her work ethic is unmatched. And her uh, love for bringing people into the sport and teaching them what's really important, uh, it, it's it's admirable. So to have her here, uh, I'm very grateful, absolutely grateful. Then I got another new friend. I got Marcus Green. He was a graduate of University of Louisiana Monroe, one of my new favorite places to go. He's currently entering his second season with the Philadelphia Eagles. 
Uh, he kind of played football at ULM, I think. He's just tied for the most receiving touchdowns in school history at 23, second in receiving yards with 2,698, and third in receptions at 202. Uh, great thing about Marcus, he's also an entrepreneur. He's got his own private label merchandise going, Mag V. We'll share some of that in our follow-up emails. Got some cool stuff out there. But, you know, Marcus is a fighter. He's worked his way from the practice squad, moved his way up to that roster. And, I mean, he fights every single week to, you know, stay relevant, stay strong, put himself in a position to succeed. And he's one of those guys that doesn't take anything for granted he is really that example of perseverance because we always talk about what does it take to go from a high school athlete to a college athlete and we know those numbers are slim now imagine going from a college athlete to the nfl it's a minute percentage and it is not for everybody and even the most skilled people don't make it to that level it takes skill will and a mindset and a heart of gold and he's one of those guys that put all that together and has created an opportunity for himself to be able to be a part of the philadelphia eagles so very excited to uh have marcus on so with that what we'll do is we will jump into uh the questions uh, that we had talked about before and we found the relevancy uh just based on our group discussion yesterday so uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna I want to start with Chip, uh, my buddy Chip. We labeled this thing Chip, building a champion's mindset, and we talked about uh, the adversity that one can feel right now as a result of our environment, uh, the situation. Um, out of curiosity, what can I do if I'm a student athlete to build a champion's mindset? I think, you know, for me, first off, I just want to say thanks so much for the opportunity before I dive into that uh, to be a part of this. I appreciate what you do and how you do what you do. And so I'm grateful to be a part of this panel with so many amazing people. So I want to make sure I say that first to you. But I think for me, um, you know, kind of like you hit on, you just have to, you know, focus in on controlling the controllables, right? You know, uh, there's lots of things that may happen in our life that, that we have no control of. And so we, you know, we can't, you know, worry about all of that. We have to really just hone in and focus on the things that are in our control. And I think when we do that, it allows us to not be anxious. It allows us to, to still feel in control, <laughs> if you will. Um, I think it allows us to continue to have growth. And, you know, in, in athletics, there's an, there's an athletic position, right? For you athletes, you know, we all know the athletic position, but, in basketball, you take it even further, there's a triple threat position when you have the ball in your hand, right? And so you can, there's three things you can do. You can dribble, you can pass, or you can shoot. So I think in these times, you know, mentally, we have to be in a triple threat position, you know, if you will. And I think we need to be in a place first where we are reflecting. And you mentioned that earlier, you know, we have to reflect on uh, the things that we want to improve on the things you know, reflect on our growth, reflect on the things that we want to improve on. And then the second, I think, is taking the opportunity to learn. You know, uh, you know, there's always, you know, time, oh, I don't have time to do that. Well, we have it, <laughs> you know. And so now we have time to learn those things and read and watch videos and do all of those things that we always love to do that we don't have time to do. And then the third is taking action. I think, um, you know, we can research and read and do all that stuff, but if we don't take the action and apply those things, you know, because uh, the application is, with, is in the application, right? And so we have to make sure that we apply uh, our reflections, the things that we learn. So for me, I think from my end, I think we just have to be in that, that triple threat position, reflect, learn, and take action. Yeah, you, you know, I absolutely, and I love the basketball analogy because yeah. – uh, it, it's, it can come in a few directions. Um, it's not just a singular focus. So that kind of gives great perspective. Uh, Mike, Marcus, or Haley, do you have anything you want to add to that about keeping that champion's mindset? Yeah, I think for me, it's it's like an everyday thing. It's almost like an everyday discipline, a, a battle mm -hmm. that I kind of mm -hmm. have to have with myself. 
right now um, is I don't know when my next softball game is going to be, right? We don't know when the, when the Olympics are going to be. So I'm having to really get creative with the way that I am disciplined, if that makes sense. Like I'm having to use and maximize the limited resources that I do have. I mean, I have a, a tee and a net set up in a, in a parking space out in my apartment parking lot. So, I mean, I, I think all of us are in that same boat right now of like, and, and take it as a challenge, you know, like it, it, it is challenging to figure out how to push yourself during this time, but it's doable. And I think if we can do it now, who's to like, we're going to be 10 times better once all of this is over. So we might as well just do the best with what we've got right now. Love it. I think if I can piggyback on that too, you said a couple of things, you know, uh, competition and maximize, you know, those are, are two big words. And I think really at the end of the day, you know, those top competitors like Haley, <laughs> you know, like Marcus, you know, those guys that are like super competitors, really, you understand that, you know, yeah, we're going to play against other people and all those things, but the biggest competition is yourself, right? And you have to continue to push yourself to be better. It's unacceptable for me to not be better today than I was yesterday. And, you know, Marcus brought that up yesterday when he was talking about, you know, Marcus, you were in that training mode and you've got your guys with you helping you and the gym closes and you're like, okay, man, this is my livelihood. This isn't me just wanting to stay in shape and eat good and all those other things. You had to adapt on the fly so you can relate to this. Right. And I'm us I usually have guys that, you know, train me and take me through the motions and pretty much show me what to do. But at the end of the day, it's, it's my work at the end of the day. So I took it upon myself to order a ladder, cones, a lot of the agility stuff that I use at training. And it, it's just me, me, <laughs> me and the work. So uh, I don't have an instructor, but I surely do have a paper to go by or any, I mean, a workout to go by. And, and I'm, I'm on my own. And my coaches are even, you know, good enough to me to where they want me to record it and send them the drill so they can critique it from from Philly so you know I'm just blessed to be to be able to even do that and to still get my work critiqued and still go through the motions and get my work done and I know Mike with your with the school system uh, I, I don't know if you're like we are but now the coaches are able to do the zoom videos and send them some stuff out. What have you seen the response being between the student athletes and their coaches? Yeah, I think it's that touch point of realizing that you uh, you can do it on your own, but you need some additional support and encouragement and pieces with that. You know, I, Haley and Marcus and Chip and I, we, we've all played team sports. So, and it's harder because our teammates aren't sitting there next to us in the locker room. And so now it's that piece of when you're doing your reps or, even practicing like Marcus is, or think about what Haley just said. She has a net and a tee in the parking lot and she's taking reps, right? So rather than focusing on what she doesn't have, she's focused on what she does have and taking advantage of that. And that's the part I think is, is huge for us because when, we're, when we are uh, working out on our own, nobody knows the number of reps that we did if we're accountable. The only person that can be held accountable is ourselves, right? And so rather than having a coach watching over us, or someone spotting us on those pieces. Now you're having to grow as yourself. And that's the difference I really think. I know Marcus and Haley can talk about this more, but <clears throat> I had a brief stint with the NFL. And I will tell you, it, it, it wasn't the size and it wasn't necessarily even the speed of those pieces. It was the dedication of people that moved uh, their performance level to a higher level because everything was to the nth degree. Uh, and it was a self-drive to be able to do that. And that's why, for example, Haley and Marcus are so successful in what they're doing now is because there's this self-drive. And now you're hearing from then from professional people who Olympians that are telling they're struggling as well. Um, right. Nice school athlete. The fact that you're mentally having to build capacity in yourself. Um, you're not alone in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, you know, the intent uh, of the call and even mentioned at the beginning is this is all a new normal. Like everything that is going on, uh, you got to think about the educators. This is something new to them. The coaches, it's something new to them. So all of us are adjusting. And that's why the more information and the more communication we have, the stronger the system and the output's going to be. So it's no different than any other process. We just have to live in the moment. We got to be where our feet are 
and the outcome will take care of itself. We can't worry about things that aren't in our control. Uh, so let me ask you, Haley, I'm going to jump to you on a question. Um, you had told me that uh, after college ball was over that, you know, you really had to do your own soul searching. Uh, you realized that much of your identity had been wrapped up just in that college softball player and who you were, you know, where softball had defined you in a sense. But uh, you had to kind of ask yourself uh, and navigate your own identity, who you were, uh, when your normal routine, that college game, was taken away from you. How did you go through that process? What did it look like? What did it feel like? And how did you regain control? And more importantly, take yourself to the next level like you have? Yeah, it was hard. Um, it was probably the hardest thing I've ever really had to go through in my entire life because coming from college, um, I was in a position where I was recognized every place that I went in Tuscaloosa, um, especially before and after games. Like it got, it got to a point my senior year where I couldn't even go to dinner with my family because little girls would just come up and, you know, ask for an autograph and whatever. And um, it was all awesome. And then all of a sudden it's just over. Like all of a sudden I don't have that routine anymore. I don't have people constantly asking me for things. Like it's almost, I, my fame was kind of done at that point. Um, and I really had to come to terms with the fact that like, I'm way more than just a softball player. And I didn't know who I was outside of being that celebrity, that hometown kid that everyone loved and adored. Um, and for me, like it, it, it was just a lot of self-reflection. It was a lot of reading. Um, and I really had to take ownership of my own discovery throughout that journey. No one could do it for me. And once I came to terms with that, like I knew that a coach wasn't going to be there for me all the time. I knew that fans weren't going to be there for me all the time. Like not even my family. I moved away from Alabama after college. So it was all of these things that I was dealing with. I had to take ownership of myself um, and who I was as a human being. And this was all stuff that I had been taught before, right? It was all stuff that Coach Murphy had taught me. You're more than your sport. You're more than this. You're more than that. But I had never really had to put it into practice. And I think that a lot of people are in that boat right now where I know I'm more than a softball player, but, but to actually do you, do you, like, do you know that you're more than your sport right now? Everyone's sport has been taken away in this current moment. So what an opportunity for you to really dive into that reflection process of who you actually are. And I think right now what we're seeing is our role as citizens is way more important than our role as athletes right now. Um, so, I mean, what an opportunity. Use this time, maximize it like we were talking about earlier, and get into reading, get into writing, journal. I mean, just just figure out who you are. You know, it's, it's funny because a lot of times when I talk to athletes, I tell them you've been taught for so long that there is no I in team. And that's absolutely false because if you don't know who you are as a person, if you don't have that self-awareness, then how do you know what you can contribute? How do you know where your strengths are? How, how do you know where your vulnerabilities lie? And to your point, this is a time you can discover the I and team and not feel selfish at all. Uh, you know, it's what you said. We talk about it with everybody and your sport does not define you. You know, that's your character, your integrity who you are as a person. And it took you losing something to really reflect upon it and realize so many people had said that to me, but now it's right out there. And for a lot of these seniors who may be in a situation of feeling that same way, that they felt value from the sport they played. They felt value from their accomplishments. None of that is diminished their true value comes from so many other things and to be able to realize that and to be proud that they left it better than they found it, that they are going to be a class who will be remembered for going through something like this. And how strong were they? What were they able to leave behind? What lessons did they teach? How are they still be able to be unified without ever being on a field, without ever being in a weight room, without ever being on a track together, but yet they still maintained a sense of teamwork. Now, let me ask you a follow-up because I know this is something that uh, I have heard asked, and that is, how do you how do you adjust your mindset with what has occurred with the Olympics? Because we talked about this yesterday. You've literally had a four-year regiment of 
goals you needed to meet at certain time periods. You prepared your life. You sacrificed. You took a lot of time off work. You traveled the world to play competitively. So how does one who is participating in the Olympics push that pause button and start figuring out what's next? Uh, I, I think right now, we don't know, like I said, when our next game is going to be. So it, it really becomes about um, how can I reduce my anxiety and thinking about the future by just focusing on this present moment, because all I really have is today. So I want to make sure the way I'm approaching it is if they tell us to go play in a parking lot tomorrow, that I will be ready to play in a parking lot tomorrow, wherever that is. So it's about staying ready throughout this entire process. Um, I'm really trying not to think about all of the things that I can't control because yes, I did put my entire life on hold for this summer. Um, I had to quit my job so I could go on tour full time. The tour was canceled, the Olympics postponed. So there are just a lot of things, whether that's, you know, emotional, physical, financial, um, that are just unknowns. And I, th I think I've had to come to terms with accepting the unknown. I'm not going to be able to control everything. And this situation is a perfect example of that. So what, what resources do I have? And it's being very pragmatic about it. It's what resources do I have? What can I do with this? How can I get better? And if I keep that simple approach, I really, really like where my mindset is and where I'm at. Um, and I think it's made me mentally tougher as well. I mean, what other, you know, what other Olympic sport is going through this where it's been 12 years since we've even been in the Olympics. We've had to wait this long. Um, and now we're going to wait for 13 years to be back. So um, it, it's, it's going to be, it's going to end up being a really, really cool story at the end. Like right now it might suck a little bit, but at the end of it, it's going to be a really, really incredible story. And that's what you kind of have to tell yourself. Absolutely. That's, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, you know, a lot of people think it, they'd love to ask it, but they don't know if you're ready to be asked that question, but knowing you, uh, you know, even your teammates took to social media after you threw it out there and it's just like, Hey, let's go 2021. I mean, it's that simple. And I loved it because a couple of your teammates were like, you know what? I stand with Haley and that's, that's the halo I know. In other words, I'm, I'm not going to waste a minute. Let's just go. We have a new thing. Change the logo. Come on. <laughs> Let's hurry. That's it. That's it. So, Marcus, I'm going to throw one your way, my friend. So, you know, at this point in your, in your career, uh, you have become acclimated. You went through that first year of personal responsibility, personal accountability towards your sport, toward your position, toward uh, what you needed to do uh, to be on that field. Uh, as a professional athlete, let me ask you, is, in the way that you train both physically and mentally, what are the differences? Because I talked about that narrow group that makes it from college to the NFL. What are the differences in your mindset, in your routine, in your discipline from college to the NFL? Uh, from college, um, you know, you're being monitored by – one coach uh, watching over almost, you know, the main strength coach watching over, you know, 80 to 85 players on the team. And, you know, there's – in the NFL, there's just less players and you have, you know, you have less time to get everything done. You're still on the itinerary. And it's it, it's overall just uh, tougher in, in the league as far as um, – as far as the work because that's all you have. Like in college, you have to focus on school – you know, doing this and that after practice. And then in the NFL, you show up to work every day and you, you have one goal. And that one goal is the ultimate goal at the end of the season, which is to win a Super Bowl. So then role play, you know, comes in, which is you know, like like my uh, my job on practice squad was to get the, the starters ready for each and every Sunday. I did everything everyone on the team did except I play, except play on Sunday. So – Getting them ready, that was my role. And then my role in college was to to play every Saturday and score touchdowns every Saturday. And that's just the role that I was given. So, you know, every level I've been on, you, you have to work your way up. And, you know, right now I'm going into my second year and I have a lot of high expectations for myself. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, what's great is you are actually being coached 
by somebody you know uh, wow. with, with Doug Peterson, who is uh, an incredible coach, uh, an incredible person, um, having the opportunity uh, to get to meet his niece at ULM who plays softball, uh, who's still there doing some stuff and getting to see him come to a football game and just the way he takes pride in walking around there. And, and I know for you it was exciting because a little piece of ULM was still there it wasn't as if you went to go play for a coach who only knew you by stats and video. He knew you by character, by integrity. He knew you uh, as a teammate. He knew exactly what you brought. And that support, I can imagine, and if you'd expand upon, I can imagine was critical in your confidence. Oh, yeah, it was very critical. Uh, actually, after the preseason, uh, I was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons in the sixth round of right. last year's draft. And I went through the preseason. Um, ended up being cut after the preseason. And that Friday, actually, I left um, Atlanta and drove down to Monroe. As soon, soon as I got cut, I was like, I, I got to get out of here. You know, I just want to get away, go see my friends, family. And I went to Monroe uh, that Friday night. And so Saturday, I wake up to go to the ULM game. And uh, I'm they're walking. They're doing the little hawk walk. And I see Doug by a tree. And I, walk, I walked up to him. And he had already – knew what happened and he just he just shook my hand and said it's, it's a tough business and that's that and we took pictures like the camera started coming at us and we took pictures and that was it like he said enjoy enjoy the game that was it and I woke up Sunday morning it was a Philadelphia number and they were uh they were asking me can, can you fly to Philly right now and I was like actually I need to drive back to Atlanta and, and pack my bags <laughs> so I can get on a flight to Philly and uh that uh that Monday morning, I was on a flight to Philly at 6 a.m. Left my car behind, left my clothes, packed well, pack whatever I could, and I was I was in Philly the next day. Like it, my life changed that fast. Yeah, you had to be ready for that, and you know, you never know an opportunity knocks. And for you, you had one weekend to kind of think about it, and then that was it. Right, that was it. Then you became an eagle. That was it. Uh, I left everything behind in Atlanta. Uh, Luckily, I have a huge family that, that drove up and unpacked my apartment, cleaned it up, got my car shipped to me in Philly. So I, di I didn't miss a beat, really. But that, that transition was probably one of the toughest moments of my life because at one point I was literally like, what what do I do now? Like, and I haven't faced that in a very long time, but that was probably the toughest, toughest time of my life. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you know – I think for a lot of people, maybe they're thinking this is one of the lowest moments in their life because not only sports, but they start thinking about uh, missing out on friendships, missing out on uh, social life, doing things, growing uh, for some seniors, prom, graduation, all of these things. And, uh, you know, to your point, I think it's just it's knowing who you are, what you are, what you stand for, and that these things can change at any moment, at any moment. But it's having the courage to, to face the situation um, and become better from it, find the lesson within it. And it's not easy. It's not, you know, it, it, there's unfortunately nobody can give you an answer because no one's had experience in this kind of a situation. We're all learning and hopefully that's what this calls for. Uh, Mike, I'm going to throw one your way. Um, you know, I can imagine the student athletes right now on the phone are wondering, you know, they've been working so hard to accomplish something. And, you know, maybe even asking themselves, what, what do I do now with those dreams th that I had set? You know, what are your thoughts on that? Not only as an educator, but as a former athlete. Yeah, I, I think uh, what Haley and Marcus just shared and even really what Chip had shared before is so powerful because uh, I think we have to remind ourselves, and it's hard when you're 16, 17, 18 years old to know this, but, uh, the greatest accomplishments come from resistance. Rarely, if it was easy and there was things handed to us, uh, everybody would accomplish it. Uh, and I want you to think about what's happening right now for Haley as she shifted her mind around her new standard of 2021. And it took her just, I'm sure she had a time of mourning and like she said she's embraced the suck, but she's moved forward. And then really think about Marcus. He's like, dang it, I just got cut. And then really it shifting his mindset and going to Philly. Uh, and it's so important to remember that just the, the tree, the strongest, biggest trees. I'm out here in the backyard. I'm looking at some of my big trees I've got in my backyard. 
And the reason they survived the storms is because they have great roots. And I think that's so important right now is that it goes back to a little bit what Haley is talking about, about finding your identity way beyond whatever that performance sport is for you or whatever that, that number you are in your jersey. Uh, it's finding it in who you are as a person. And that piece of it is so important because dreams, uh, you know, those pieces uh, are still real. They're still alive. You can find a better way to maybe uh, even – Maybe there's something bigger and better than what you even think there is out there. You know, it's, I use this a lot because I see a lot of uh, guys in particular in the football program or even uh, some of our uh, female athletes that are working that they all want this D1 scholarship, right? Uh, but what I tell is that you may not get a chance to go play some big, huge school, and uh, but you'll get a chance. And when you get that chance, what are you going to do with that chance? And so um, – don't sit back. Don't just wait. Take some initiative on your own to figure out how am I going to take care of what I control, just like Haley and Marcus and Chip said. What do I control right now? What are the very things? Like, I don't have a weight set. Okay. Haley doesn't have a batting cage. She's got a net in a parking lot. And if you notice, she's ready to play a ball game in a parking lot. Like, she's ready now. She knows <laughs> right? Marcus bought a ladder and cones. They got the, it didn't stop them. They're not sitting back playing Xbox thinking that's going to get, they're going to get better that way. They're finding ways to make themselves better in what they're doing. And that's why I say dreams are not dead. There maybe there's something even bigger out there. And those who come out of it stronger now will be those who are stronger teammates and making their teammates stronger. And those who have chosen to take this adversity and dig those roots even deeper. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I don't even know what to add to that. It was very inspiring, Dr. Mike. I appreciate we, that. We can just close in prayer now if you want. We're all, you know? just, <laughs> that, that, was, that was a good question. What do you think, Chip? How many stars? <laughs> hey, amen, brother. <laughs> Thank God it's Sunday. Amen. And the church, church said amen. amen. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> hey, well, why don't we try this? Why don't we open it up for some questions? Uh, you can utilize the group chat. And uh, we'll be able to see the questions. We'll, we'll ask the question. And from there, we will uh, just kind of throw it around and see who's best prepared to answer that question. So if all of y'all have your group chat, you'll see it right there. You can throw it. Okay, so let me see. I've got one here, and I'll just throw it out to any of you guys who want to answer it. But they talk about, is it good to keep the same routine that we had in school for training? Is it good to keep the same routine that we had in school for training? I'll, I'll answer. I mean, I'll say something on that. I, I, think, I think it's important to have a routine, but I also think it's important to have a healthy balance. You know, you don't want too much of one thing and not enough of something. Or you know, I think it's important to find that healthy balance. And I think this really gives us an opportunity to, like we've said, just like look at the things that we feel that we need to improve on. I think that we can really, you know, really hone in and work on those things. But like routine is key, I think. Yeah, you know, I, I be um, yeah. Yeah, Marcus and Haley, I wonder, just from their perspective, because, like, mentally, I'm sure you're working on things right now because there's a little bit more idle time than usual. So what do you all do, Haley and Marcus, to I mean, the mental side of it? I would think that would be the most challenging piece of it. Yeah, I think for me. Um, right I keep my routine. Uh, I keep it the same. I think it's lagging a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go ahead, Marcus. I think I keep the same routine. Um, it honestly, it just depends on you know what level what level you're you're at. Like if you're going from 11th to 12th grade and you're used to your high school routine, uh, they you know keep that and you know stay on top of that. But if you're going from college, I mean from high school to a university or college, um, you're going to the next level. So at that time, I feel like it's time to take your training to the next level, which is what I did. When I was in high school, I'm not going to lie, I didn't have the best strength and conditioning programs in high school. And 
I got to you. I got my workout packet the summer before I enrolled at ULM, and I was like, "Wow, like this is <laughs> this is college." And so, and even going from college to my NFL workout, they're just extreme. Like they're so they're prepping you for the next level. So, I, I think uh, to answer that question, you you should stay, you know, where you are, whatever level you're at right now, unless you're making that major jump from high school to college, and and take it to the next level if so. Yeah, definitely you know, on all that. Yeah, I, I think right now it's – I do have a routine, but it's not the same routine that I was used to. So it's about accepting what my new routine is. So, like, for me, it, realistically, I, I was not going to be able to maintain the same routine. I was on a tour where I was traveling, you know, every three or four days at a time and playing games every single day and, and – having team practices before we play double headers like realistically I'm not going to be able to replicate that so it's about sitting down with and again just evaluating what I have how can I build in my new routine because like you said Vic like this is a new normal right so I have to deal with that um and then get into that kind of routine aspect but yeah routine is critical and it's important because if you don't have that routine set if you don't hold yourself accountable to that you can you can go into a downward spiral really quick by just you know getting distracted on social media or scrolling for an hour well oh crap you know there goes an hour of my day (laughs) have that structure set up for yourself and if you need to rely on parents or teammates um, you can do that too because our group chat with uh, uh, my teammates team usa has been blowing up like just about like what they're doing individually um like hey guys this is how i'm handling this hey guys this is how i'm handling this right now like keep that connection you can you're you and your teammates can still push each other right now so don't feel like you're just in it by yourself but but rely on the people that that are still in your circle i mean this isn't this is one of those areas that i talked about um you, you can find your competitive edge right here right now uh you just got to be willing to push yourself because some are going to settle. Some may even fall back into their comfort zone. It's staying out of that comfort zone. Uh, There's okay. Let's see. We have some great questions popping up here. So uh, what are some ways or ideas to stay connected with teammates? You talked about the group me, uh, but I'll let you guys expand on that. What are some ways or ideas to stay connected with teammates? Well, I'll say something on this is that I, I don't like this word social distancing anymore. Because it's really not social distancing, it's physical distancing. Uh, so the social distancing, think about what Haley just said about the group, me, or even really Marcus talks about, I keep connecting with team. You are a, you become a great teammate by connecting, and there's still ways you connect. Matter of fact, I have found that I didn't know what Zoom was and, uh, as of about 15 days ago, and I have, I'm a Zoom master now because like, I have done 8,000, but I have more with people now because of life's pause. Uh, you can do that with your teammates. And really, I, I guarantee in Haley's group text, uh, there's a lot of encouragement going on there. There's probably a little bit of jabbing each other, but they're also holding each other accountable about making sure they're doing the work um, and lifting and building each other up. And so I, I think that's the piece of it is you actually have an opportunity now to probably grow. The teams that are going to accomplish the great things when we get out of this deal are the ones who stayed connected right now. Yeah. 100% agree. 100% agree because – uh, what was fun is this past week uh, working with uh, a lot of the high school teams was sure. I can't speak to them anymore because we can't get together. Zoom is the next best thing. And just like you, Mike, I was like, I, I finally felt old because I had to learn how to do what all the young kids were doing. Like Facebook was hard. I mastered that. Now I had to go do this and you know, it was playing around, but it felt really good to see people's faces and their emotion because we're a social being. We need that in our lives, especially when you're a part of a team. Uh, that's, that's what feeds off each other, all those roles and those pieces. And doing those Zoom calls, you, you'd you get off the phone and you really would feel enthused again, excited. Uh, you got to see people talk. And even though you weren't doing it on the field and you weren't doing physical stuff, you were still talking about certain things, whether it was a book discussion that you're doing chapters of, whether it was a challenge that was put out to you for working out on your own, but it was connection. And that connection just earns trust and, you know, you move forward. Absolutely, you move forward. Anybody else want to add upon that? Yeah, I'll, ju- I'll jump in here really quick. I-, I think one cool thing that w- we're doing with the national team right now is we have a scheduled uh, Zoom meeting every Tuesday afternoon. 
and we're calling it uh, TED Talk Tuesdays. So we're going around taking turns. Um, every person on the team is going to go at some point and they're going to give us like a 10 to 15 minute presentation on what they're super passionate about outside of softball. So it's a good way for us to like really get to know each other and, and take those connections even deeper. Um, it goes so much more like it's so much more than just motivation or um, like really feeling like you're in it together. Like I feel like I'm actually getting the opportunity to get to know my teammates now. Whereas beforehand it was just like, we're practicing, we're playing, we're practicing, we're playing and you get in that flow and you don't even have time to dive into, you know, who your teammates actually are. So it's a self discovery right now too, but use this time to get to know your teammates a little bit better. FaceTime people you normally wouldn't um, get outside your normal friend group and just see what happens. Cause you have the time, like, I think that's way more productive than sitting around watching Netflix or playing PlayStation. Like you have this opportunity to use it. So this is this question, uh, you know, I, I can relate to because of a nephew I have, but it, the question says my four, my four children feel like their world is over. And no matter how much my husband and I share faith and best practices with them, what else do you recommend to let them know what they are, uh, what they, um, let's see, what they have not done because they've missed their junior year of high school baseball and softball season. You know, I, I had, and the reason I say my nephew is I had a nephew who started thinking back right before they left school and this kid who was coughing everywhere and they were like, do I have it? And that just, they became fixated on that. And that was the whole conversation. And there is, I think, a lot of uncertainty and fear going around. And you know, this question about, I, what, how can we recommend that these kids aren't done? Mike, you mentioned it about the dream, uh, but that they're not done just because they missed their junior year of a sport. Yeah, it's a huge, uh, you know, hey, there is a, a sense of mourning that, that has, that's been lost. And I think to recognize that is, uh, should happen. I don't think you gloss over it by any means. But they do have a gift of having an additional year. I think one of the things is uh, stopping to pause and recognizing, and you've heard Haley and Marcus talk about this, what are the things that, that you really miss, that you cherish the most? So that when you get back and you have an opportunity, I promise you, it's like the smell of the glove for Haley or whether it's the, even the nasty smell of a locker room for Marcus. Those are the kind of things that they miss right now is because you can't have that. And so really working through them about okay, what is it really that you're going to miss? Uh, now, they may think that they aren't going to have a chance to get a college scholarship. They're still going to have a chance. Everybody's in the same boat right now. Yeah. And it's really motivating them to be able to uh, create a niche to, to help themselves stand out. But really taking into those precious moments of what are you really going to miss? And then when you get back to it and you have an aiming point forward, uh, just like Haley talks about 2021 now or whenever the next game, she's ready, uh, knowing that there's things forward uh, and moving forward. You know, I, I just put a blog out and it was talking about uh, take the time right now because I always tell people make a gratitude list, but I'm like, why don't you add to that? Write down everything right now that you think you're, you've taken for granted, like the simplest things in the world, like write them down. Even if it's having toilet paper, I don't care what it is, write down what you took for granted. And when we get back into that normal and that busyness and that routine, you better go back and look at that list. The first time you complain about something, the first time you don't want to do something that's a responsibility, something you're accountable for as a teammate, go back and look at that list and remember that time when you would have given anything to not have mom and dad teach you at school and you do jumping jacks in the garage. Like there is going to be a time where you can go back to that list and laugh, but it's true. What are you taking for granted right now? That's humility and vulnerability. Write it down, make a poster because get ready. You're going to be tested. You're going to be tested on that one. Yeah. I think, I think too, to add on that doc, <clears throat> I think we have to recognize that there is a process of getting through it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, and don't devalue the fact. I mean, like really like, like it is the most important thing, like for all of us, you know, you look at, especially, you know, those are super, that are super successful. You don't just get there. Like it's taken some time. You've invested lots into what you're doing. 
So when you just automatically like it's not what you're doing on a daily basis, like that's a different feeling, you know. And so there is a process for me after you get over the whoa, this is weird, you know, feeling, you know, there is a process where you have to gradually, you know, work to establish your routine. OK, now you see, OK, these are the things that are going on. You know, these are the things that are out of my control. These are the things that I can still have in my control. You know, and you have to really go through that process so that when we grow through this, you know, not just go through it, when we grow through this and get on the other side of it, we come out hit, and we hit the ground running when it when it's back to the norm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so let's see, we've got a high school softball coach. So as a high school softball coach, how do you suggest we stay connected with our athletes in terms of motivation during this time of uncertainty? So looking for some examples. Uh, I know we talked about the group me, um, uh, some of the other projects, but what other ideas are out there where we can ensure the motivation and the mindset and the focus stay in the right place as opposed, as opposed to stray off in that negativity cycle that, in my opinion, is all over social media right now. You can live watching TV 24-7, and that negativity, negativity cycle is just in an infinite loop. How can we get that finite mindset of just focusing on what I have control over? What are some other ideas maybe some of you guys have uh, for the high school athletes? You know, while y'all are thinking, I'll throw one out that I, I've seen. Uh, one of the schools I work with right now are actually doing a book study. And they do three chapters, and one of the team members are responsible for going over it, generating the questions, and doing the discussion. Uh, I've seen the book study. I've also seen where they take control of uh, a project. You know, I, we've all done the one word. Uh, where you establish one word and instead of this resolution of this long drawn out thing, you just pick one word, one thing that you can focus on and it can be applicable to all parts of your life. People have shifted that one word saying in this situation right now, what is my one word that I can control, that I can act upon, that I can grow with. And they've taken that one word and those are the discussions that they're having. So when somebody has a strength through their one word and somebody happens to be struggling with that characteristic, or that feeling, they know they can bounce off that person because they're already telling you, I have confidence in that one word and I want to take accountability for it. But what are some other things that y'all have seen? Uh, you know, Mike, have you seen within your athletic departments and programs they're doing that are pretty interesting? Yeah, I love how you put uh, talking about kind of what you're feeding your mind, especially around the, the news networks and all this stuff. You know, I was on a diet. Uh, I was doing keto before this thing and now I'm just doing keto. <laughs> <laughs> I can I, I can guarantee you it works. Yeah, the keto or keto? What's one? <laughs> keto is working really well right now. But you know, uh, it's interesting. So a lot of uh, the team zooms have been working out really well about set a designated time and like Haley's talk about. So it's interesting. I, not to defer the question, but I'm I'm curious from Haley. So they're all doing these TED Talk Tuesdays. So how do you, what's the subject area that y'all are doing your TED Talks around? Are you doing it around a certain book or are you guys doing it around certain character traits or what are y'all doing? It's, it's just, it's completely up to the individual. Like if it's your, if it's your Ted talk that day, you just tell the rest of the team something you're passionate about. The only thing is that it can't be related to softball. Uh -huh. So like for, for me, I, I'm a strength and conditioning coach. So like I'm going to give a presentation on strength and conditioning. Another one of my teammates did nutrition um, where, um, we've got some people that are doing essential oils. They're like super big into the, how essential oils work and all of that. So they're going to give us a whole presentation. Meditation has been one, um, reading will be one. And I think journaling will be another one, but it's just, it's like, it's who you are as a person. And it's so cool to, to experience it because we're, we're getting to see almost an, a completely different side of of our teammates. It's like, I know you as this personality on the field, but I had no idea that you were this passionate about something else. So it's been really, really cool for us to kind of get to know each other a little bit better through that. And we just made it, we literally made it Ted talk Tuesdays. We just picked a time, um, picked a day and we meet every week and we just go through it together. Um, 
we've had like little team movie nights where we'll like, we'll put on a movie and we'll text each other in our, in our group me like, Oh my God, I, ha- I haven't seen this movie in years. Do you remember this part or whatever? Like just little stuff like that to where we're still, we still feel like we're around each other, but we're still practicing the, the distancing part of it. So. You know, Mike, I had another team um, that they, to, to put some finality and closure to the season, uh, they, did a moments chart and I actually saw this uh, from uh, Brett Ledbetter and I might be wrong, but I think it was from the Florida softball coach. But what they did is they filled out something that basically what was their favorite moment of the season and they wrote it out and the coach had put it on a board and everyone got to see the board and they made a PDF of it and sent it to everybody. Uh, What was cool about it is you know, there was still a small portion of the season played and all they wanted them to do is find, tell me something that was great. I know there was something great in the time that we did that you can say, this was my favorite moment. And that way, what they look at is something that's positive instead of looking at nothing. So now to your point, Mike, there's no closure. We're not allowed to feel the way we do. Now they're like, let's celebrate what we had and let's put it on that moments board. I thought that was a great idea. And I think half of it is just getting creative. Right now, nothing is off limits. Just get creative. Yeah, you think of the connectivity piece of it with that, and then really even with, with Haley's team, because that has nothing to do. I saw another question come up about, about trust with teammates. You talk about yeah. building capacity with each other. You, If you know you know that person to the nth degree and you know them deeper, you're going to perform better when you all get together. Uh, and that's a huge piece. And I can promise you, Haley's coach didn't initiate that. Some of the captains or the people on that team are the one that initiated that kind of level of connectivity. And that's why uh, you know, I've seen a couple questions that have come up. But that's really how you build. You don't have to be the starter on the team to be a leader on the team. I think that's the other piece of it that people have to realize is that you, you may not yeah. even be that piece of that person, but you still can take initiative right now to lead your team. Yeah, this is an opportunity, you know, to your point, Mike, leadership is not about the spotlight. Leadership is not about rank, title, or authority. It's not who's the loudest. Leadership is simply influence. And if you have the ability at this point to be that creative person on the team who says, I need to find a sense of change. I need to help my teammates. And as dumb as it may be, I'm going to find a breakthrough. I'm going to be innovative, and I'm going to throw something out there. All you want to do is influence a positive change. So somebody says, hey, what if we do TED Talks on Tuesday? And everybody buys into it, and we go through that cycle, and you learn something. You just became a leader right then and there because you influenced a positive change that made a stronger team and that built a group. And that's why I said this is the time, I believe, for coaches and players to really become creative in their thought process because you have the ability to step up and be a leader without having to yell, be a team captain or a senior. This is it. There's, there's no dumb answer. Just go after it, right? So let's go about that. I, I liked uh, one of the questions here, and uh, it's a compliment that starts. This is a great group and probably uh, the ones who don't struggle with the routines and staying focused. For those teammates who do struggle with individual accountability, what are some different thoughts in using your team to engage those who are struggling while distancing? That's a great question. So you do have this team, but there are some people who struggle with individual accountability. How do you engage them by still following the rules of distancing? Can I uh, take a gander at that one? Hit me. All right, so I think there's two things that that come to mind when I hear this. I think uh, the first, I think you can do a three-tier program, you know, just like mentor kind of, deal check up on me program you know where you have coaches leaders and then you're you know the rest of your athletes but then now you know like you said you know with that deal that they were doing it didn't really come from the coach it really it came from one of the leaders and so you know like you said when it's that way it's really more impactful and you know that hey you know we have each other's back when it's when it's go time it's on you know and I think the even more than that you can partner them up um you know, partner the teammates up and, you know, and then they can have open dialogue. Cause I know as a player, um, you know, speaking from a player perspective, it was always great to, 
have someone that I could go to that has experience, you know, maybe a, a year or so older than me. Okay. Where are these classes? Like, wh what do I do with this? You know, where a coach may not have time to answer all of that, but this person can. And so, you know, that same person, I'm still in a great relationship with that guy, you know, way far after college. We actually talked yesterday on the phone, you know, and so it allows you to build and establish those relationships, not just for now, but for a lifetime. Yeah, we kind of had a program like that at ULM. Uh, incoming freshman, you were assigned to an older guy. It was the Big Brother program. Uh, mm. Like, it was pretty much you two were one. And, like, for example, if someone was late to workouts, if the, the freshman was late to workouts, the junior or senior, uh, they took the punishment and vice versa. And I think that helped uh, hold hold each of us accountable because I didn't want to make him run and he didn't want to make me run. So that's how we just held it together all, all year. And he was my big brother for two years. And uh, I think after – once he graduated, then I became the big brother. And then, you know, you're just passing the torch down. And to this day, the guy that was my big brother, uh, we're still very close to this day. and We're hours apart. But we still talk almost every day. So I feel like he was uh, very influential, on, you know, over the course of my college career. You know, what I think he goes back to is something I tell teams all the time, and that is successful teams coach themselves. So successful teams coach themselves who is willing to understand that, take accountability and become that person who becomes aligned in the thought process of the coach who knows what the coach's expectations are, who buys into the mission and the vision and understands the work that it requires. It is somebody who is empathetic towards each of their teammates, but at the same time, uh, they understand that in order for the collective to grow, each of those individuals have to contribute and they just have a way of doing it. And I think this is the time where if we are looking for somebody, that person who may not be self-motivated, uh, who may not necessarily be the one who just goes out and does stuff like everybody else does. I think the more people who help him other than ridicule him or her, there's a better opportunity to lift. And when you see the groups getting together and the challenges, that is one thing I love on social media right now. Teams are challenging. And I love it because basketball is saying, hey, volleyball, we're going to challenge you to a workout. And I saw where there are letters and you take your initials for your first two, now your first name and your last name, and that's the workout you got to do today. Or we're doing the 25 push-up challenge. Can everyone on your team do it? Because our team's going to do it. I mean, just little things like that. Now you're not only creating unity amongst your sport, but the school is getting involved, and now it's sport versus sport versus sport. And I've even seen one of the boys against the girls. And now it's fun. Now it's become something that uh, there is pride involved, school pride, team pride. And now we're getting positivity out of those things. So let's see. I think you talked about this, Mike. How can we build trust amongst our teammates without doing the workouts together? Um, and I think we've kind of covered that for the most part. Uh, it's just going to be the examples set. Uh, so I want to throw a question out. Um, what, what can the coach do uh, above and beyond in their role that they've ever had an expectation or a lesson plan or what they were taught, what can a, a coach do right now to ensure the um, mental awareness of their players, to ensure that the stress and the anxiety uh, and the depression of things that may be going on in their life that maybe other teammates don't know about, but you always know a coach does know about, how can that coach go above and beyond in securing uh, the vulnerability and uh, just taking care of that player? You know, I, I asked that question because we're talking about a lot of things and I think mental health is very important. And we've got a lot of high school kids who are confused, who have anxiety, who have stress and who are too young to know the answers. And sometimes they're not vulnerable enough to ask the questions. 
And for most, their coach is a mentor. Their coach is someone who they look up to. And the coach knows these situations usually. They figured it out. What role? Maybe, you know, Mike, maybe that's something with you, with your years of experience. What can that coach do that still stays within the bounds of being an educator, but at the same time just having the humility to, to love? I think that the greatest coaches are educators, and I, I guarantee that the, those on the panel could echo this, is the ones that one, they weren't the, uh, just the person who was the X and O's or the, the strategy or the tactics. It was the ones who cared about us deep, uh, as people. And that's the part of it. I think that the vulnerability piece has got to start with the coach itself. You know, I did something uh, today kind of as a a social experiment, but also to kind of um, uh, know how to help and support people that uh, kind of follow me on different social media things I put out there. It was something simple you could do as a coach is uh, you had just uh, five different colors of the emoji heart. The, The red one said that I'm doing fine all the way down to the blue one that says I'm struggling. And you just said, hey, just put the heart on there. Let me know how you're doing. If you're comfortable enough, if you want to message me, just let me know what's up. And so, you know, everybody knows what those emojis are. And so they can just simply put that up. And it also gives you kind of a a starting point to have a conversation with them and going, okay, so tell me what you're struggling with. What's going on right now? Whether that's the motivated or unmotivated one. But, um, and even if they give a big red, I'm okay. Just tell them, keep going. We got this. And, And just really being able to be vulnerable to reach out in some simplistic way. I think often as adults, we have, I don't know what happens, but us as adults, we tend to stray away from that the older we get. And I don't know why, but we need to be able to be bold enough to be vulnerable uh, as a coach to our kids or as a teacher to our students um, because they need to see real, authentic, uh, not just uh, an act. And they can see through that pretty quickly. Absolutely. I think the, I think I that, yeah, just just showing that you care means a lot. The effort to show that you care and, you know, something as simple as a, a check in. Hey, just checking on you. You know, something that simple, like, you know, as a coach, you don't you really don't have to do that. But, you know, if you take it upon yourself to take the time to shoot me a text or just say, hey, checking on you for me as an athlete, that means a lot to me because like. That, that guy's time is valuable, <laughs> you know, and if he's taking time to do, then, then I, I'm going to do what, what. And, you know, the, the flip side of that too, that, you know, for those student athletes who are listening or for those coaches, um, one thing that I would encourage you to talk with your students about is, Gratitude is so critical at a point uh, like this because we are all uh, in, in, a, in a different mode. Remember, we talked about this new normal. And I think one of the suggestions that I've made to a lot of teams is take the time right now to send your teacher just a simple email saying, I know this is new. It's new for me, too. I know it's frustrating learning how to use all these things. I just want to thank you during these difficult times. We're going to get through it. We're going to make the most of it, but I'm here to help in any way possible. And I really think that if we are able to utilize gratitude, uh, you know, one of the things that we learned from John Gordon is you can't experience stress and gratitude at the same time. They're too powerful of emotions uh, to, to just control. They don't shift. You have one or the other. And if I had to choose between stress and gratitude, 100% of the time, I'm going to take gratitude. And I'm not being a Pollyanna, but what I'm telling you is I'm going to find something in the situation where I can grow, and if I'm lucky, I can help someone else grow. And that's why I think taking these opportunities, we call student-athletes leaders. We call student-athletes the cream of the crop. They understand sacrifice. They understand commitment. They understand what it takes to go above and beyond. If they can understand that leadership is a privilege and the sport that they play is a gift, they can make an impact. They can help motivate students who may not be all with it right now. They can be the person who's a shoulder to lean on. Uh, They can be the ones who say thank you. And it's an incredible opportunity for somebody to grow. 
and to become uh, stronger in their character and integrity. It's just being creative and it's having fun. That's all we got to do right now is positive, positive, positive. And when we recognize somebody has a vulnerable moment, to your point, Mike, it's addressing it. And I think that's what's phenomenal. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, here is the panel's commitment to each of you who have joined us. Uh, when this is done, we'll send a, an email out and we'll have the uh, ways you can get in contact with each of us. Uh, everybody here has got either a website and or an email address. And if you have specific questions for somebody, please, please don't hesitate to ask. The whole thing with this is we didn't want to just come together and give you an hour and a half of our time. We want to be part of the solution. So a lot of people that ask questions about what can we do to motivate our players? What can we do to push our players? How do we get our teams engaged? If one of you coaches that are on here find a way, please share it with the group. That's the whole thing about this. Let's make everybody stronger, everybody better. But on behalf of myself and the four that have joined, uh, we sincerely thank you for committing the time, uh, which is the most valuable asset you have on a Sunday. We hope you got something out of this and feel free to uh, give us some feedback. Maybe we can set up another one soon and answer more questions. But thank you to everybody who joined. Chip, Haley, Mike, Marcus, thank you guys very much. Have a great Sunday and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much.